welcome to my home. If you're new here, my name is Karen, and I really have some deep cleaning goals for today, and they end up stretching into the next couple of days. But before I can do that, I need to get the basics done. There's no point in deep cleaning if I have dishes in the sink, if my morning routine isn't done. So that is always the first order of business. And oh my goodness, there was a day when I was filming this over the couple of days where I said to my husband, I'm like, I really need you to do my morning dishes because I'm getting myself all worn out on the basics and then I don't have the time or the energy to do the deep cleaning. Added to that, I don't want people to see me empty my dishwasher four times in one video. <laughs> it's just that thing that is always there over and over and over again. My holidays always look a little bit different than other people's. Even before my dad passed away 18 years ago, my parents were spending their winters in Florida. So since my kids, my, since my older kids and my son, my oldest is 30, since he was young, we have always been home unless we were traveling, but I didn't tend to want to travel on Christmas because of the Christmas presents and all of that. So we've pretty much always been home for the holidays with our kids, and that's very different from when I grew up. When I grew up, my grandmother that lived in our town would come in the morning and see all of our presents. And then after presents were open, we would head to my other grandmother's house, which was in Massachusetts. And we would spend the day with my mother's family. And that was how we did Christmas. And so mine is very different from that. It's so funny because people ask me if I'm hosting Thanksgiving or if I'm hosting Christmas. Yeah, I always am <laughs> because we're always home. We're always here. There was a time period of a few years when we would go to a friend's house on Thanksgiving who lived real close to our home, but they have since moved and so we are back home again. And so it really does force me to think about what is a happy holiday for us. And one of the things that's super important to me, even though, let's say, for example, my sons are not coming home, the sons that have moved out, all three of them, for Thanksgiving, I do love to have a clean home on a holiday because it just helps me relax. And up until three of my kids had moved out, when it was more of us at home, I would even do laundry on Christmas day because I just couldn't stand to have it all pile up on me. Those days are gone and I don't need to do that, but I still love to have a clean and orderly home for the holidays. I'm sure once all of my kids are grown and moved out, there will be holidays where it is just my husband and I, and I think I will still have that practice of trying to have the house a little shinier, a little cleaner. It just makes me feel so good and so relaxed. This year on Thanksgiving, we will definitely do the traditional meal of the whole Thanksgiving turkey and stuffing, potatoes, all of that. But we're also going to do some Christmas celebrating. We always watch the dog show, the AKC Championship, Nash, I don't know, National, is that what it is? We love to see the dogs and I plan our Thanksgiving dinner around it. And honestly, that is one of the beauties of being home is you can kind of plan it the way you want it. And I'm sure we'll watch a couple Christmas movies. We plan to make gingerbread houses. I was thinking about decorating cookies. And we'll definitely do some home decorating and get the Christmas really going on Thanksgiving Day. So I'm really excited about that. And then two days after Thanksgiving, our daughter Yvonne turns 18. I just cannot believe that she's 18. That means I'll only have one child who is under 18 in our home, and that's only until next year when our other daughter turns 18. So we are coming on the home stretch of having any minors in the house. Obviously, the dishes are done. I'm getting going on the laundry. Nowadays, when I get up, there's often blankets on the couch because we're all trying to stay cozy. That was Robin's gift last Christmas. Isn't that so cute? I was thinking about getting him another one. There's one I saw that has the owner in a bed and the cats are on either side. I just think it'd be a, kind of a fun little running gag if I got him a different cat shirt every year. He never used to like cats, but Woozy kind of changed his mind because he's just such a sweet, almost like a Southern gentleman. And then Leo's just so crazy. But I think Woozy really softened my husband up because Woozy just loves Robin. He follows him around. He always knows just what he's doing. He misses him when he's gone. Sometimes he'll sleep in the rocking chair beside my husband's rocking chair. It's just the funniest thing. 
Side note, I don't know if you noticed, but my hair is kind of crazy here because I think I had washed it and I just let it air dry. So what happens is when I initially air dry it, it has these beautiful curls and I think, oh, I love this. But then as it goes through the day, the curls just kind of die and I'm left with, it just seems like frizz, honestly. But so far so good today, <laughs> but it is a little crazy, but it is what it looks like naturally if I don't do anything to it. Back to Thanksgiving, you'll excuse me if I'm a little random today, <laughs> but I was also thinking about getting the girls, I have to be quiet because my daughter's in the next room, a little gift bag of self-care items for Thanksgiving. I just thought it would kick off the holiday season. We don't do advent calendars, so I thought I might do that and put it outside their bedroom doors so when they get up on Thanksgiving, they have all these nice self-care items, some lotion, maybe a bath bomb, you know, something like that. And then maybe at some point during the day or in the coming days, they can just have a little self-care day. I know that I think all of them well, three out of four are working on Black Friday because they all work in retail. And so they're all a little bit bummed about that, I know. So maybe some self-care items will help to cheer them up. Here is the laundry all folded and pretty. And I'm just going to put it away. And then I have a little bit of planning to do. All right, house is still a mess. But I realize I need to get a grocery order in because we're having company for dinner tomorrow. And my daughter's just having a friend over and we're going to make pork tacos. So I'm running a quick list while my brain is straight. The pork tacos take salsa. I know I have garlic. I know I have all the seasonings. It's basically making your own taco seasoning and adding salsa. You put the pork in the crock pot. You can use pork loin or you can use a pork roast. It doesn't matter. And you kind of pull it like pulled pork. It's really good. I need to make sure I have corn shells. I should probably buy some corn shells. Then we'll have rice with it. We always have guacamole. So we're going to need to go to the store to get avocados because I never trust the store to give me good avocados because this is delivery. Um, tostitos, toast, can't write, tostitos. I know I have lettuce. I know I have tomato. I know I have cheese. That's good. Yeah, and then we're going to a pie night at our church on Saturday. And so what I'm going to do is a 9 by 13 chicken pie. The way my mother used to do that is she would do it in the 9 by 13 for like church suppers. And she wouldn't put the crust on the bottom. She would put the crust just across the top. So that's what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to need the 9 by 13 pan. That way I don't have to bring anything home. It can just go in the trash. I need to buy more potatoes, carrots. And then what I do is I use chicken thighs. I've done it two ways. Like usually you would make a chicken pie when you have leftover chicken roast, like a whole chicken. Um, I used to make my own broth, the whole thing. Or I'll do turkey. I'll, I'll always do a leftover turkey pie. But if I don't have leftovers, I'll do one of two things. I can either do a pre-cooked roaster chicken from the store, but then I have to make some sort of a gravy with broth. So the easier thing to do is to buy chicken thighs because you get a good broth from them when you cook them in like a big pan. And I add water. I'll add chicken broth to that, and then I'll thicken it like gravy with cornstarch and use that. So... I'm going to get chicken thighs for that. I have onions. And then I need to figure out some kind of sweet pie, but I'll need two pie packages of pie crust. One for the chicken and then one for a sweet pie. I haven't decided what I would make for a sweet pie yet. I need to ask my husband. Maybe that's something he can do. Of course, you can always do apple pie this time of year. That's pretty popular here. For Thanksgiving, though, I'm not making pies. I'm going to buy pies. I don't think it really matters. Um, the pies at my local store, I mean, they bake them there. They're good pies. I'm going to do strawberry rhubarb and pumpkin. So I need to transfer some money before I do my Thanksgiving shop. I was hoping to do this all in one, but I think I'm going to make my list here. I buy two turkeys at Thanksgiving time because they don't usually go on sale at Christmas time and we do one at Thanksgiving, one at Christmas. So while they're 50 cents a pound or whatever they're going to be, I get them now. Sweet potatoes for a sweet potato casserole. Potatoes. So I need marshmallows. 
butter, potatoes, which I have in the other list too, so I'll just get a big bag that can go for both. I can't believe that Thanksgiving is next week. Stuffing. I buy the Pepperidge Farm. That's just my favorite. I make my own gravy, but I don't make my own dressing. I used to do it as stuffing, but stuffing a turkey makes me uncomfortable, even though we've never gotten sick from it. Um, what else do we have? Turnip, squash, and then I'm going to cook the turnip, the squash, and the sweet potatoes the day before, which I don't usually do. But the, we do the sweet potatoes with like butter, brown sugar, and then you put marshmallows on top and like toast the marshmallows under the broiler. It's, the girls love it. I don't like it. So it works out good for me since I don't want to eat too high carb anyway. Then I'll buy the pies and then I'm going to get ice cream uh, for Sundays for Yvonne because she doesn't like pies and Sunday toppings. And then I'm waiting for my daughter, Rachel, who is dairy free, gluten free to tell me what she plans to do. She usually makes her own dessert and I'll just help her if she needs help. All right. That's not too bad. All right, so that will give me the food for the next couple of days. I need to put in my grocery order and have it delivered. And then I usually will check online coupons to see if there's anything I have not clipped or you just click on it. I love that. No carrying coupons around. The way my store does this is whatever you have purchased in the past will be at the top of the coupon list. I love that. So as you go further and further down, you see less and less that you would actually clip. Okay, so what I've decided to go with is a boneless half pork loin because it's $2.50 a pound. It's an average of four pounds, which is way more than I need, but I could always cut some off and freeze it. Whereas the smaller ones are $5.99 a pound. No, thank you. No, thank you. Well, you see, I didn't get any more done than that. I got the groceries ordered and I got those put away and that was about it. So today my teenagers are having friends over. So they're having three friends over and we were going to do pork tacos, but then we found out that one of them doesn't eat pork. So I decided to do the exact same recipe, but with chicken. And we, this is one of our absolute favorites. And then I cut up like onions, tomatoes, lettuce. We have cheese. I make guacamole. You know, we usually pair it with black beans. I fry up some corn burrito shells and, you know, it's just, it's a burrito bowl for some. It's kind of like a chicken or pork taco for others. So any of the chicken I'm not using, I'm immediately wrapping each breast separately in saran wrap. And then I put them all in a Gladlock bag, pop them in the freezer. This is so super helpful because then it doesn't matter who is home for supper excuse me, supper, the night that I use them, I can just take out however many I need easily and defrost those. This is a cookbook, Meals That Heal, where I get the pork tacos. We use a whole jar, and this is a larger jar, probably like, I don't even know, at least it could have been 48 ounces. I don't really think about it. I just buy a larger one dump it all in, and then I'm going to use some spices. So I'm going to tell you what is called for in this spice recipe. I just kind of guesstimate because I'm parting it out and I'm not using the whole recipe, but it calls for a quarter cup of chili powder, two tablespoons of cumin, which I never actually see myself put in here, so I wonder if I even did, a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of paprika, a tablespoon of garlic powder, and you'll see me put in like two spoonfuls of minced garlic because that's just the way I prefer it, one tablespoon of cornstarch, two teaspoons of dried oregano, and then optionally, because I don't use it, a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So you can make that up and you can keep it. And then whenever you're doing anything taco related, that is a really, really great taco spice. And we just absolutely love it. 
and I just left it in the crock pot all day and then I shred the meat and you're ready to eat. I did forget to take a picture of it when we were done. I so apologize, but I was also using the fact that we were having company to give me motivation to get going on my deep cleaning. So this is something else that kind of has to be done weekly is just, of course, because I have glass top end tables instead of dusting, I end up using the glass cleaner and then just going through here with my vacuum cleaner. I have had a Dyson vacuum for years and I mentioned it in another video that it's not doing so great picking up gravel or pebbles. So a lot of times I come through again with a broom or I just sweep the bare floors and then I vacuum the rugs. So I'm getting the rug all vacuum. And you know, it's funny, I don't think anybody would have noticed if I did not do these things, but it sure does make me feel good. It's hard for me to enjoy company if I feel like my house is dirty or is a mess and it is a funny thing about cleaning it's the more I clean the more dirt I find does anyone else find that to be true it kind of drives me crazy but the dirt had all come up and that's when it gets clogged part of it was because it was a spot where I was kind of using the highest suction and it tends to happen whenever I use the highest suction and then or the highest speed suction i can't even talk and then i have to unclog it to keep using it so yeah i'm just getting the bathroom all wiped down i make sure to dust the toilet every day because it gets super dusty from toilet paper even though i use the cheap thin stuff because we have a septic you're not supposed to use the soft stuff when you have a leech bed that's what our septic guy said I'm having a little bit of backache. You might've seen me just grab my lower back. I'm just getting things wiped up. The mirror was fine, but I just needed to, you know, just wipe down the surfaces. It really wasn't that bad. So no deep cleaning in here today, just getting it ready for company. And now we had company, it was great. They played, I don't know if you've heard of Drawful. There's games that you can play on your TV if you have an internet TV. They had a blast playing that. They played Uno. Um, I think they might have watched a movie. It was just a really good, wholesome, normal night. It just always does my heart good to see teenagers come over and be happy to play board games. So I'm getting my office cleaned up. I had been noticing that we were getting some stains on that rug and it's one of the things I love about the rug. It doesn't show a lot. That's the ceiling from my bathroom, by the way. I was putting it in the hallway because Robin is working on the ceiling and so I wanted him to make sure he remembered that those pieces were there. I'm trying to get this rug vacuumed up nicely because I'm about to shampoo the carpet and you always want to vacuum first. So especially when you have animals like I do, you don't want the animal hair clogging up the shampoo or it's not meant to be a vacuum cleaner. But honestly, I need a new vacuum. It doesn't pick things up as well as it used to. And so uh, I do tend to have to clean out the shampooer more often and get the cat hair out but we just do the best we can with what we have and hopefully next year maybe in the spring I'll be able to think about getting a new vacuum I've been eyeing the shark vacuums so if you have a shark that is cordless let me know how you like it I do love having a cordless vacuum because you could just zip around the house in no time at all I'm trying to get any dirt that's underneath the radiators here I had seen some dust bunnies and cat hair gets in dust bunnies and so it just really needed it right over here my office is a little overcrowded these days i really want to get the two blue chairs out of there i think one thing that will help is i'll have to move one of the rocking chairs in the living room into this room for christmas time to be able to fit my tree because last year we didn't have those rockers when we got our tree so getting the blue chairs out of there will be necessary to pull the rocker into my office so in the end that's really going to help just curious if anyone has finished their christmas shopping let me know in the comments section if you have finished your christmas shopping no i have not begun yet <laughs> 
So this um, is a very textured rug and it's great. It has a rubber backing for collecting any water when it gets snowy, but it's super hard to vacuum. Everything kind of sticks in the ridges. You can see I have my shampooer on the floor in the kitchen and I also have my steamer because I do plan to steam the kitchen floor as well. I always want to make sure that you know that I'm spending multiple days doing the things that you see me do in this video. This is a Saturday by now, so this is the day I get the most done because I don't have any other responsibilities. I don't have any coach calls from my health coaching business. I don't have any homeschooling, so I'm able to focus a lot more on the house. So see, you see me sweeping here because this tends to be where a lot of the gravel collects because people coming in from the outside, pardon my phone right there, and getting it swept up is a lot easier than vacuum. You can see my husband in the distance there kind of going back and forth because he's working on the upstairs bathroom. I'll show you his progress and I thought I had a complete after part where I show the whole ceiling completed because he did get it finished, but I didn't see it on my camera, so I will do it again and show you in the next video. Also, are you playing Christmas music yet? And if so, do you prefer the traditional Christmas music or things that are newer? I really like the traditional, but I did find this song and I thought I would play it while I shampoo the carpet and then I'll pop back in and we can chat some more.
I love that song because it's just a reminder for me to be thankful that I am here and can enjoy another Christmas. And even if I am going to see some of my kids on FaceTime, I'm just so thankful to be in this generation when we have FaceTime and I can still see my kids. In fact, one of my friends, she'll have dinner with her son who lives, that's cat here, by the way, who lives a long way away with his family. They'll be sitting at their dinner table, my friend sitting at her dinner table. And it's just wonderful that we can do this now. So I'm just trying to make sure that cat hair is not getting anything clogged. This is a Hoover carpet steamer carpet cleaner and I really do love it so user friendly you go over it once and that's washing it and then you had there's a button you can hit for dry only and it sucks out extra water it doesn't dry the carpet that would be amazing if it did so what I do is if I know people are going to be walking across a section of the carpet I lay towels down for a few hours until it is completely dry that way no one's getting dirt footprints on there and I'm not having dirt kind of rise up again I haven't had that problem of dirt coming to the surface again or stains coming to the surface it does a really great job removing stains you can definitely see the nasty water this is why I love gray this is a gray and white carpet but because it has varying darkness and lightness, fadedness, that style, uh, it doesn't really show dirt until it's really, really bad. So that's been a blessing. But I do love this shampoo. It has attachments for furniture, but I have to say, for some reason, the attachments aren't working when we plug them in, and we haven't been able to figure out why. I think I've had this maybe a couple of years, but the price point was low. It probably was under $300. So I can't expect miracles. I can't expect it to last forever, even if it gave me three to five years, I would be completely happy with that and would buy another one when it's done. I have got the idea to buy it from the channel Till Vacuum Do Us Part. She's super clean, so I figured, well, if it works for her, because she's a very diligent person when it comes to her home, then it would work for me. So now I'm just laying down towels because I know people are going to be using that door to go outside. It's just our habit. And that way I don't have to remind people to stay off of the wet carpet. But most everybody's working today, so I don't really have to worry about anyone kind of hanging out in my office. So that's definitely helpful. But look, look at that nasty water. Oh, it's so dirty. Now I'm just going to get the room put back together and then I can get working on the kitchen. And what I usually do with that nasty water is I flush it down the toilet because I feel like that's more... You know, I don't want to put it down my sink. I don't want to worry about my sink getting clogged by anything, but I feel like the toilet can handle it a lot better. I always use the soap that came with the Hoover or the type of soap that is specifically made by Hoover. And I always use a stain removing soap as well. And I've had really good luck. So now I'm just getting that rug put back down for people to wipe their feet on and it just feels so good and I can always tell a difference in it smelling so much more fresh the stains are gone so I lit a candle right before I started cleaning the kitchen and before I do the floors I'm actually going to wash the walls and I'm pretty excited about that. And Leo has got himself up in his supervisory position and we can get started. <laughs> My dirty walls have been bugging me for a very, very long time to the point of like, I wish I would have had this one or that one painted. Robin is working on the upstairs bathroom. That's why you're here. So I got this. I saw it on somebody's video. I have no idea whose, but it says it's called Zep. You got it on Amazon. Foaming wall cleaner. Gently removes stains without damaging finishes. Safe on painted walls, baseboards, doors, wall coverings for scuffs, fingerprints, grease, food, ink, lipstick, marker, and crayon. So I'm gonna give it a try. Ooh, that's why I had that up there. All right, shake well. Spray light coating, wipe immediately. That's easy. Yeah. 
it works. Wow, it works good. It took off a black mark, but it was actually a scuff in the paint. So it took the black off and just left obviously the scratch. I at least need to touch these up, even if I don't need to paint them. This is so much better than a white erase because white erase leaves streaks or patching. I can't wait to try it on my blue wall. Wow. And no paint on the rag. I cannot believe I procrastinated this because this is the most fun I have had cleaning in a very, very long time. And I'm kind of excited to go through the house with this cleaner and see how it does on each room. This works so good, it's fun. This was really great, especially on the area behind the trash can because that tends, let's just be honest, it's in the splash zone. So even caked food and dried up who knows what came off so well. I did have to, you know, rub. I, I could have maybe even used a scratch pad, but I was a little bit worried about scratching the paint. So I'm using a microfiber cloth and there there is some rubbing going on. You know, it isn't like just wipe away and it's gone, but it definitely comes off and it's the best wall cleaner I've ever used. Okay. Well, I'm not using it, so. It also did really great on those areas of your wall where everybody kind of puts their hand to walk around and it just over time gets kind of like nasty and almost black. I wonder how it would work if you had a puff back with your furnace. One time we had a puff back and it just filled the house with black smoke. It got all over the walls and the only way to clean it honestly was to repaint because every time I tried to wash it, it just moved the soot around. But I wonder this might have worked. What you doing over there? This is a wall cleaner. A what? Wall cleaner? Huh, I'm actually using it to take some paint off of this wood door. It's a miracle because you know how when I use the white erase sponges, it like compromises the paint? Yeah. This doesn't and it takes off literally everything. There were like stains all over that behind the trash can, even stuck on food. My might help with the upstairs uh, door. We've had like Patches of mold oh yeah. For a while. Oh yeah, the bathroom door. Yeah, because I actually want to paint that white and scrape it all down. Yeah, you're right. This is like I saw it on somebody's cleaning channel and bought it on Amazon because I was influenced by an influencer, but it was a good influencer because this stuff is like ridiculously good. And then it shows me other spots where it's like, oh, I guess I do need to touch up paint here. Yeah. It's been hot. So it's like black right here, and I'm taking it off. And this stuff, you know, I don't clean these regularly. This has been here for years. Yeah. Because I, like I said, white erase takes the paint off. So. You're in cleaner euphoria right now. I am like so excited right now. I know I was only going to do this wall, but now I want to try it on the blue wall. I'm sure it would.
When it comes to a stain, I will say you got to really rub. Mm -hmm. Why does the spray scary please? <laughs> I saw him jump a little. Um, uh -oh. Maybe he's just reshuffling himself. I wasn't planning on cleaning my dining room on this day, but this spot right here, it's kind of like the chair line, it's been so, so dirty to the point where I really felt like we needed to repaint. So I just had to try it and it worked great. Honestly, it was so very satisfying. Even Leo's impressed, huh, Leo? You impressed, huh? Ooh, there's Robin's progress. Oh my goodness. I feel like you can kind of see what my color vision is going to be. Okay, next project. I want to get this floor steamed, but before I can steam it, and I'm trying to show you that it's really very dirty, but it's just so hard. The camera doesn't always do the best job at picking it up. I mean, it's kind of obvious right there, but this floor, oh goodness. I do sweep it every single day, but it also needs to be steamed. It, you know, it's light gray. It's going to show things. And honestly, I don't feel like light colors show dirt as much as I thought they would. It's really funny because I don't feel like my white cabinets show dirt very much at all. I got to be really looking for it, but I am going to get a steam. Look how long the pole is on my broom. I mentioned it, I think in my last video that the broom handle had broken. <laughs> and so we had this and my husband just screwed it in. And uh, so now I have this super long handle to this broom. But anyway, we're gonna get this all swept up and then I'll use my steamer. The steamer was one where a brand had sent it to me a long time ago. And it is my favorite one. I will say whenever you buy a steamer, it is much easier to use a steamer that spins like this one. It has two pads that spin. And the reason for that is you usually would need to keep a steamer moving at all times because you don't want to sit it on your floor with that heat and let it just sit there. I mean, it can do some damage. So this one also has temperature control, which I can't say I completely know what I should have it on. Look how dirty that is. But the thing about it is because it has two wheels that are moving all of the time, I'm not as stressed about keeping it moving because it's moving itself. So that is the part of it I would highly recommend you doing. I don't know if one is better than the other. This has washable pads, but you're not supposed to use detergent. At times I have used Norwex detergent because I felt like that was pretty safe laundry detergent to use on it. But most of the time what I do is rinse it with good hot water when I'm done. And I do love being able to clean my floors without using any type of soap or cleaner on them. I always find it super satisfying to steam the floors. It's just one of those things where it's kind of like vacuuming. I love to vacuum because there's dirt on the floor. You swipe that vacuum, you make a pass and there it's gone. And I feel the same way with the steamer. I have this on like four times the speed, so it doesn't go that fast. In fact, when I was shampooing the rugs, I most of the time had it on double speed. If I'm moving around too much, I put it on double speed so I don't make anybody seasick. But if I'm not moving around, like right here, that's double speed. If I'm not moving around a lot, then I'll put it on four times the speed, mostly because this is a 40 minute video. If I were not to do that, it would be like a two hour video. And I just don't think, you know, I'm able to show so much more when I do speed up the video, but I wanted to make sure you knew, especially when I was using the carpet cleaner, I did have it on double speed. I don't move the carpet cleaner that fast. I go pretty slow to make sure I'm getting everything up. So my kitchen is clean and I'm able to just steam the floors. I know sometimes it feels like when companies coming, that's when you should clean the floors. I totally get that, but I do feel like, especially if your kids are having friends over, I don't want to get things too clean. I don't want to feel like people are tracking in dirt and I just clean the floors. And I was actually thinking about that for the holidays. I'm thinking, do I want to clean my oven or do I want to wait until the holidays are over and then clean my oven? Why am I going to clean my oven if I'm just going to get turkey juice all over it and then it needs to be cleaned? I will say I have oven liners and whew, highly recommend 
because then it keeps the bottom of the oven from getting all nasty. And then you're really only dealing with the sides of the oven when you go to clean it and the glass. So I am glad I have oven liners. I am going back and forth in my head because it's been forever since I have cleaned my oven. But I'm just not sure I want to do it before the holidays because I feel like I'm just going to be getting the oven dirty again. And I, even though a steamer doesn't get a floor very wet, which is why I love it, it still does have dampness to it. And so this is my schmancy fancy way of drying it so that people can be walking on it right away. We always dry the floor. And what I do is I just take a towel that's kind of honestly already on its last leg. And that's what I use. And look, that's where all those stains were and it is gone. Consider subscribing if you're new. Remember, as always, God loves you and I love you too. And I can't wait to see you next time.